Many people transitioning to Blender think that Blender's graph editor is poo-poo, especially if they're coming from Maya. I think that those people just don't know how to set it up. So here's the only tutorial you're gonna need if you wanna animate in Blender's graph editor. Let's get into it. So for this video, we're gonna be using this file, which is an exercise from our animation course. One of the first exercises talking about squash and stretch and overlap animation. So the first thing we wanna do is set up our graph editor to be as optimal as possible. And that's the most important step. And luckily you only have to just do it once. You do it once and then you reap the rewards for the rest of your animation journey in Blender. Now, the very first thing we want to touch is actually a keying set. Now, this basically tells Blender that I want to set keys on such and such. In this case, I usually select this option, which is telling Blender that every time I set a key, I want to set a key on location, rotation, scale, and any custom properties. This works really well with more complex characters like Max and May that have features like the tongue curl and mouth zipper and other custom properties. So now every time we set a key, a key is set on location, rotation, scale, and any custom properties the, the rig has. If you want to see them here by the channels, just go to view and check on show sliders. Maya has it this way. So if you want to make your workspace more like Maya, then you can do this like I have. Now, one big thing with Blender's graph editor that people, <laughs> it really pisses people off is that Right away, you see, for example, I select these uh, tail controllers here. You can see all the curves and every single channel, even if they're not selected. This is an issue because if I want to select just, let's say, this key right here on the blue end of selecting everything, and that's not how we want it. But there's a very easy way to fix this. You just have to go to Edit and Preferences. In Animation, just come down here where it says only show selected F curves. So once you select this, only the channel you select will be selectable. So if I do this now, only the rotation on blue is gonna be selected, but I'm gonna go one step farther. I'm gonna drag down the opacity of unselected F curves or unselected curves. So I'm gonna bring this down to let's say 15%. And so now whenever I select something, everything else goes lower in opacity. So you do this once and you never have to do it again and it sets your Blender file up for life. So something else you can do is go to in the graph editor, go to view and then check on only selected keyframe handles. This will give you a cleaner view and make sure that you don't actually select the handles of some other channel that you don't have selected. Normalize. Now this one is very, very important. And as an animator, I always have it on. So what normalize does is that it fits all of your curves between one and negative one. It force scales them so that you can see everything and you can adjust any curve right here in this one view in the graph editor. With normalize off, you might have to do a lot of scrolling up and down and trying to find the curve or the key that you're looking for. You can see how much I'm struggling here, but with this on, everything is just right here. I can just go between the different channels and everything is force fit between one and negative one, as you can see right here. If you want to master all of Blender's animation tools and not just the graph editor, then this is for you. We've created a laser focused course from everything we learned while animating on Netflix's award-winning show, Maya and the Three, which to date I believe is the largest project done in Blender. So if you're interested in learning everything we've learned about Blender's animation tools condensed into just one week, then check out our Blender Basics course for animators at toanimate.ca. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Now on to moving keys. So with Blender, you have a lot of options to move keys in the graph editor. So for example, you can just select the key and press G to move it basically anywhere, or you can lock it. You can press G and then Y telling it, I only want to move it in the Y axis up and down. And then once you click, it confirms the change. Or you can press GX, which you only move it horizontally or you could even move it by certain points. So you say, I want to move this, let's say forward by one frame. So you press G X. So you're saying only horizontal and then press one. And now it just moves by one frame forward. You can do this for everything. So you can select everything. Say I want to move everything forward by one frame G X one. 
enter and everything's moved forward by one frame. You can do it vertically as well, of course. So GY, let's say five, and now it moves the head up by five points. And of course, if you put in GY negative five, it'll go down by five. That's for moving. Now for scaling, it's just like how you would scale inside a blender. You can use S to scale in and out, and you can give it the same restriction. So you can say S and X saying you only want to scale in the horizontally or S and Y, you only want to scale vertically. Now, the center of your of the selection box is basically where you can scale from. So here, you know, we're scaling right from the center of where we selected. There is some other ways to scale as well. So for example, if I come here and change this from bounding box to 2D cursor, now we can use the 2D cursor to do stuff in the graph editor. And you can move the 2D cursor with the hotkeys shift and right mouse click. So you can see that I can move the 2D cursor by holding shift and right mouse click. And I'll say, I want to put the 2D cursor here. So now, even though I've selected everything, when I scale, I scale out from this point right here. So if I press SX, I only scale in the horizontal direction from where the 2D cursor is. A lot of tools like this come in Blender as part of the program, but some of these things are actually paid in Maya or on top of the program. You have to get Animbot. So a lot of Animbot features come for free inside Blender. So with the 2D cursor, you're not just limited to scaling. You can actually rotate from the 2D cursor as well. You can see my entire graph is rotating from where this 2D cursor is, which is pretty darn cool. Now to loop your animation, like we've done here with this, uh, this ball animation, all you have to do is just press shift E in the graph editor and click make cyclic. And that's, that's it. That's all you need. So if I clear cyclic, this is what the animation looks like beforehand, right? I just press a to select everything, shift E make cyclic. And now you can see the graph cycle. To change the extrapolation, you can press T and here's the options that you might be used to. We have constant, linear, and Bezier. Bezier is essentially spine and with constant, you're going pose to pose. So you're holding the pose until the next key, holding that until the next key and so on. And with linear, it's just like Maya or any other program. And you usually want to use after you're, you know, you're finishing your animation, you want to be using spline or Bezier. Now to let's zoom in here to change the tangents here so that you can actually move it freely. For example, that hot key is V. So you press V and you have a set of tangents here. Free is what I'm using here. Free means that one doesn't affect the other. So if I have it on aligned, let's say moving one side affects the other side and it doesn't give me the result I need for this particular situation. So I can move, change it to free and then move these individually to create the curve that I want to have. Now at this point, I can't remember if Maya has this, but I really love the automatic clamping. So you can press auto clamp and it automatically tightens everything up. It tries to make sure that there's no weirdness happening in your graph, which is pretty nice. A button that you saw me use earlier, this is something that again, you have in Blender, you press A here to select all the controllers. Well, you can do the same in the graph editor. You can press A to select all your controllers. And remember, Blender is very cursive sensitive. So your hotkeys work where your cursor is. Now that I have everything selected, I'm going to come select all the channels by moving my cursor here, pressing A. And now I can press A on the graph editor to select all the keys of all the channels of all the controllers. So now let's say I only want to select all the controllers to the right of my playhead. So let's move my playhead to 10 and I wanna select everything past here. What I can do is press the square bracket on the right and that only selects everything past my playhead. And obviously the left square bracket does the opposite. So pretty handy hotkey to keep in mind. Now, if I select everything and I press X, you actually have the option to delete all the keyframes or you can clean the keyframes. What clean the keyframes does is that it deletes any static keys that aren't affecting the curve. So if I delete that, let's see if the animation still looks the same. There's a little bit of a hiccup, which we can fix, but everything else that was static is now gone. And so our graph looks a lot cleaner. 
and we can figure out what this hiccup was. It must have happened because we had a cyclic animation. So we can fix that one little hiccup there and everything else should be much cleaner. Now, I haven't used Maya in a couple of years to be fully transparent, but I remember struggling trying to use maybe middle mouse key to try and drag a certain key and then set a key on it, to try and co copy paste the key essentially. It was, it was a struggle for me. But luckily with Blender, you don't have that struggle. You can just select all the controllers or one and come here and just press control C and then control V. And this line tells you that this, this key, it has the exact same values as that key. So we just copy pasted it. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. So it's very easy copy paste and there's no hassle with it really. You can just come here and say, oh, I like this key. I'm gonna set a key on it, copy it, and then paste it elsewhere. Cause now I just have that. I can just paste it anywhere. Something else that we have in Blender that we don't really have in Maya is this little secret menu by pressing N, you bring up this menu right here. And if I select a channel, let's say um, I want to select this and then location Y. So you have access to modifiers here and you can use modifiers to add noise quickly to your animation, for example, to your graph, which can be pretty handy if you wanna do camera shakes, for example. Some examples will be, you can also add a stepped interpolation to make your animation look like it was done on twos. As I mentioned earlier, there's also other things you can do like noise. So you have a lot more control here on what you want this noise to do, like scale, offset, and the depth of the noise. And you can even do restricted keyframes. So let's say I want the noise to start from frame 10 and I want it to end on frame 20. So from frame 10 to 20, now you have noise that you can, you know, mess around with and it just gives you a lot more control of stuff that's more mechanical, for example, makes it so you don't have to hand animate everything yourself. Another thing you can do is these check marks right here. These will mute your animation essentially. So if I mute uh, the up and down on this ball by unchecking this, everything else works like the squash and stretch, the tail, but you don't see the translation Y animation on the ball. So I'm gonna unmute it now, and there we go. So if you're trying to isolate one part of your animation to see if it's working, this is the way to do it. It's a really easy way, you just check mark it, or rather check it off, and you can focus on the parts of the animation that you want to focus on. Another handy tool that if you've used Maya, for example, you should be familiar with is a Euler filter. And you can find that under channel, discontinuity Euler filter. Sometimes your animation will mess up really bad where you're rotating something, you know, multiple times over that creates some sort of nonsense in your graph. And what the Euler filter does is channel discontinuity. It should fix that for you, get rid of that nonsense. So if you over rotate something by a bunch, and you go to the value of like, you know, negative 700, it'll try and fix that for you. So we did that, we pressed the Euler filter, and now we have, we had to go from 700 to essentially 60. It tries to fix it so that it keeps the same rotation, but it makes it so that it's within the range of one to 360 degrees. Now, something else we can really talk about is zooming in on one particular section or a single key on your graph editor. This is the same button as anywhere else in Blender. So here in the viewport, for example, if I press the numpad period button, I zoom in, that's my focus button. It's the same in the outliner, which we can't see right now. There we go. And it's the same in the graph editor. So here I, I wanna focus on these three keys here. I'm gonna press the numpad period key and we're zoomed in. So you can scroll in, scroll out, you can also hold control and middle mouse to kind of scale in to zoom in more or scale up to scale it more vertically. And then I'm gonna press A to select everything, press the numpad key again and zoom out to sort of see everything. And the last thing we're gonna to touch on is just to add markers, which can be really helpful for yourself to remember certain things, but also if you're working with others. So for example, I can say that, you know what? This is gonna be the maximum stretch right here. So what I can do is press M over here in my timeline to create a marker. And then I'm going to double click it to rename it. And I'll say max 
not squash, max, max stretch. And let's say here's a max squash. So I'm gonna press M, double click it, max squash. You can delete these markers by just uh, either selecting them. As you can see, this one's unselected, this one's selected. I can just press X, delete marker, yes. This one as well, X, delete marker, yes. And that is it. So that was the basics of the graph editor in Blender. I hope you found it helpful, but there is a lot more advanced stuff you can do in the graph editor and Blender's other animation tools as well, which we cover in detail in our Blender Basics for Animators course. If you're still not sure and you want to learn a little bit more about Blender's animation tools for free before committing to a paid course, then I made a video with a ton of gold nuggets for Maya animators who wanted to transition to Blender. So it covers a lot of Blender's animation tools and you can watch that for free right here. So go check that out.